May God be with you. Good evening and welcome to Monday Thursday worship at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. For those who are online, wherever tonight finds you, we're grateful to have you within the fold. And for us who are here at church, we are in the midst of Holy Week. And tonight we will settle in to the night before Jesus' death. And it is from the Gospel of John this year. And John's focus is on Jesus washing the feet of his disciples and also giving them a new commandment. 
In addition to that, we will partake in Holy Communion ourselves. And so as we begin, I just want to invite you tomorrow night for Good Friday services, again here in the sanctuary and online at 7 p.m. And as we approach Easter Sunday, know those times are early sunrise service at 6.30 in the chapel across the street and then in person and live stream at 9 and 10.45. A couple other notes on our service tonight. We will end our service with um, the bearing of the altar. All visible signs of Christ's presence will be removed to more fully help us go into the passion of Christ. And we invite you to stay as uh, we do that and then as we end the service we end in silence there will not be spoken prayers tonight you're welcome to write your prayers on the whiteboard in the welcome area and both staff and the prayer team are praying those prayers as you write them so as we begin tonight we name the truth of ourselves and this world and come to receive god's grace in our confession and forgiveness friends in christ in this lenten season we have heard our lord's struggle call to struggle against sin death and the devil all that keeps us from loving god and each other this is the struggle to which we were called at baptism within the community of the church God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of these great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. We'll take a moment now in silence for our own reflection. We confess together, most merciful God, we confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
We pray together, holy God, source of all love. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment on our hearts and give us the will to serve others as Jesus was the servant of all. Amen. The Gospel this evening is from the 13th chapter of John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. 
If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Word of God, word of life. Go up and soak those feet, girls. I can still hear my mom's sharp command after we came in from a day of playing outside in the summer. My sister and I had just enough room on each side of the bathroom vanity to take a seat, dunk our dirty feet in the sink, letting the sand and mud and creatures caked between our toes melt into the soapy water. It was a comforting ritual at the end of a hot day. And then after the washing and drying of our feet on clean towels, we would, of course, fight about whose turn it was to unstop the sink. Dark swirls of the day's muck spinning down the drain, leaving always interesting residue on the sides of the sink. I can't imagine any of this was good for our plumbing. Such an ordinary memory of an ordinary day. And if you think about it, today is a bit of an ordinary day, too. It's a typical Thursday, somewhere in the middle of saying goodbye to the harshness of winter, we hope, and welcoming spring. Yes, Monday Thursday is a holy day in the church, part of our sacred story that marks the transition between Jesus doing ministry and Jesus on the cross. But nothing in our culture, anyway, sets this day aside. For most of us, today is just another day chock full of work and school and commitments. And so those of us who are here, I suspect, are here for a reason. Perhaps you come with the days or the years or even a lifetime of burdens caked on to your weary feet. It's breathtaking, really, that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, on the night before he would be nailed to a tree to face an ungodly death, Jesus takes off his robe, ties a towel around himself, and assumes this posture of humility as he scrubs the filth from his disciples' feet. The basin and the towel are powerful images for Jesus and the God we worship, a God who in Jesus has not only experienced what it's like to be absolutely human like us, but who delivers a sermon to the world in and through his actions. This sermon is about how it is that we are to love. And yet there's something even beyond the radical humility of Jesus in this story that caught my attention tonight. And that is that Jesus appear appears to care about feet. Just think about what Jesus is facing. His disciples are arguing. 
One is soon to betray him. Another is soon to deny him. He knows he's going to die soon. And yet he extracts himself from the drama unfolding all around him to pay attention to their feet. All of their feet, for that matter, including the feet of Judas, the disciple who would soon betray him, and Peter, the disciple who would soon deny him. At such a time as this, Jesus cares deeply about the condition of the disciples, muddy, sandy, cut up from walking miles with rudimentary sandals kind of feet. In other words, He cares deeply about their most basic needs. And so it's here, eye to eye with Jesus, with our filthy feet in the basin, that we begin to glimpse what is really meant by the author of the Gospel of John when he says this about Jesus. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. My question for you tonight is, are you open to receiving this kind of love and attention? Might this ordinary hour on this ordinary day be just the very right time to offer up your burdens to the tender care of Jesus? You might not think God cares about such things, or maybe you don't think God should care about your burdens, given the big problems and the weary state of the world. But Jesus' actions on this night, recorded so long ago, speak otherwise. Have a share with me, he pleads with Peter, who, if you notice, does everything in his power to get out of having his feet washed by his teacher. Some of us can probably easily relate. But Jesus appeals to him, have a share with me. Find a place with me. Abide with me. Just like Peter, we must open ourselves up to receive, to receive our share of the fullness of Jesus' love in order to carry on for him when he's gone. It's an ordinary night, friends, and you are invited to bear your vulnerabilities and your most basic needs to Jesus. So what might need washing away? at this hour. We're not physically washing feet tonight, but imagine, if you will, dipping your toes into a warm basin of water or a bathroom sink, whichever you prefer. What is it for you that needs tending to? Is it a sorrow? See that it can loosen with water and Jesus' tender care and begin to circle down the drain. Is it fear? Imagine it too, swirling down the drain, a resentment down the drain, an unkind voice in your head down the drain, a prejudice held however tightly down the drain, a wrongdoing unforgivable, you might think, down the drain. Even with all the conflicts and violence swirling around in this weary world, allow Jesus to care for you on this ordinary Thursday night so that you might have the strength to do the same for another tomorrow and another the day after that. Thanks be to God for sending sending God's Son, Jesus, into the world to show us what true love looks like. Amen. Friends, for our next song today, we're going to be singing an echo song together. So I will sing the first line, and then I invite you just to sing it right back to me. Um, If you don't think you're a good singer, 
you can speak the words back to me, but I think you're a good singer. So let's hear it. I am here in the heart of God. God is here in the heart of me. Like a wave in the water, like a water in the wave. I am here in the heart of God. I am here in the breath of God. God is here in the breath of me. Like the wind in the springtime, like the springtime in the wind. I am here in the breath of God. I am here in the soul of God. God is here in the soul of me. Like a flame in the fire, like the fire in the flame. I am here in the soul of God. I am here in the mind of God. I am here in the mind of God. God is here in the mind of me. God is here in the mind of me. Like the earth in my body, like my body in the earth. Like the flame in the fire, like the fire in the flame. Like the wind in the springtime, like the springtime in the wind. Like the wave in the water, like the water in the wave. I am here in the heart of God. I am here in the heart of God. With God's words breathing among us, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
And now may the peace of God be with you all. For those online, we greet you in peace. You may write your comments there for us at church for us to extend both give and receive peace from those around us. We continue now with the offering uh, for all the ways that you give financially. A Venmo code is in the bulletin, um, a box out in the back, a basket up front, uh, especially kids for your coins and dollars that go to feed people who are hungry. our offerings. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you as you pour out your very presence 
through Christ Jesus, the source of life. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As the Spirit gathers us together, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are all welcome to this table. As Jesus says, he loves us from the beginning. He loves us till the end. And he cares about you and what we are carrying tonight, what is heavy on your heart, what is weighing you down all the things we can see and the things that we can't. What Jesus cares about is the dailiness of what it means to be human. And that same grace, as Jesus wrapped that towel around his waist and washed the feet of his disciple, is here at this meal. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Jesus' death until he comes again. For those online, wherever you are receiving com communion tonight, receive these words. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For us at church, simply open your hands to receive this gift. The wafer is gluten-free, wine is dark in color, and the juice is lighter. You're welcome to come up front and use the kneelers to pray if you choose. Please come forward. This meal is prepared.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. You have given all to me. To you, God, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and silence. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 